Today we're going to go over a step-by-step -step process to fabricating a Munster splint. This splint is designed to prevent form rotation and wrist range of motion. To make the pattern, you'll want to position your patient with the form in neutral on top of a rectangular piece of splinting material. Line up the distal end of the material with the distal palm or crease. Angling your splint marker slightly away from the patient's hand and forearm, trace the length all the way to the back of the splinting material. Mark the posterior aspect of the elbow and create a U-shape to be able to clear the elbow crease during splint fabrication. Lastly, mark the CMC joint to create a small circle for the thumb hole. While your material heats, you can pad the medial and lateral epicondyles as these are areas of high pressure. While the material is warm, cut out your pattern and roll the edge of the thumb hole outwards in preparation for molding. With the patient positioned in elbow flexion and forearm and wrist in neutral, gravity will help you control the material during the molding process. Once you drape the material onto the patient, start distally and stretch the material gently to enlarge the thumb hole and clear the thenar eminence. Next, roll down the distal edge of the material to clear the distal palmar crease. This will allow unrestricted MCP joint range of motion. You can now move proximally to roll the edge of the elbow crease away from the patient. Then secure the wings alongside the epicondyles by pinching the excess material together posterior to the elbow. You can pop open the wings and cut away this extra material after the splint has begun to harden. Continue to gently conform the material to the length of the patient's forearm. Here you can see that technique of pinching the wings behind the elbow. Once you've cut away the extra material, you'll want to add the straps. Replace the splint and put one strap posterior to the elbow, the next strap at the proximal forearm, an additional strap at the wrist crease, and finally a strap at the level of the distal palmar crease. Once you check for fit, you can now repurpose the padding used in the initial fabrication from the epicondyles and place it inside the medial and lateral aspects of the splint for further alleviation of pressure points. Now you can replace the splint, check for fit and comfort, secure your straps. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for tuning in.